So, um, back to where we stopped the last time. I think we stopped at um, the three part one. So, probably this is day five, but we are still in day three. So, we have a long way to go. So, the three part two um, would be what is next, which is, um, yes, I think we stopped at the weight function, right? We st stopped at the weight function, which will allow a parent to wait for the child, one child to be done before it executes. So, we have this exercise to do. If you haven't seen um, where we use the weight function, click on the link here if you are not seeing the link it means i've not had it so go and look for it manually all right so um let's see so we have to perform this tax right so this is what we'll be doing in this uh, particular um, chapter which is the three part two okay so it says write a program that will execute the command this we've already used the exec v to execute right but they said in five different child processes so different processes it means it to do it five times right as you can see so with that we will use fork to create processes we use wait y because each child should be created by the same process by the same father remember i explained how a father can um um give birth to two children and then you, if you use the fork next it would father will still um the two children will now be the one giving birth right but this time around one father has to give birth to these five children right okay and then wait for a child to exist before creating a new one that is when we we'll use this wait function okay so we'll dive into that now and then we'll see uh it's gonna work so let me just allow this guy to load okay okay so we'll sit into our um shell tutorial Okay, good. So, what next? Uh, so, create our guy. So, vi um, it is called fork weight and exec, right? FW dot C. Okay. So, first, I will include the. Sorry, I will include the normal. SDIA.h right so I want to include my standard library dot h I want to include my system types dot h and also include for the weight I include my system weight dot h right so we have this and then we are doing system call so i'll include my university dot h okay with this five bed i think we should be good right so we'll go into the main and we'll call it void because we're not passing the parameter or should we are we passing uh let's see let's see let's see no no person so let's i'm trying to see if the other one is passing so we are not passing any parameter so it's going to be like that so first we have a pid underscore t which is the one that saves our um file our process id so i'll call this one for the child the child process ID right okay good so we'll have this one for the weight int and then let's call it status because that's what we used so far so you understand good so we'll have a space so here is the parent that is coming the parent process ID 
so we want to create a fork right so we want to create a fork so we'll create a fork right and what this guy will do is he's going to make the parents give birth to one but if we create another fork here right it means it is the child the parent has given birth to one so the parent and the child is coming so by the time we create here the parent will split into two again the child will not split into two so that's not what we want we want the parents should be the father of all so for that we we'll put it inside a loop right and then i'll put it inside a for loop okay okay good so i'll put it inside a for loop i will say i want to make it to go four times so i'll say i so i have to create an int i outside so int i so i can say i is equal to zero i is less than five so that one will go from zero to five or you can say i equals to one is less than or equal to 5 and you can say i plus plus so this one will make our fork uh, retreat twice okay so we'll give the return value to child child underscore pid equals to okay so the return value would, would be passed to child and then with that that will be done so we can then say that okay while, while um, producing it so this one is just um, for safety okay so if our child underscore PID if our fork returns uh, minus one then it should print error okay so this one is like just defensive right so we don't really, um, let me say, need it, but we just have to put it, what if it prints. So we use the error function to print error, right? And then, uh, error. So we print error, right? And then we end this, and then we'll ex return one there. return okay so let us continue so what this space does is that it helps us to create five children right so this guy will come here and then when he gets here the parent still seeing this and then it creates this guy right then the loop start again and then it creates more children creates more children so that's five children now right so five children are the parents they are coming so they are, the six of them are coming now right they are executing this program remember that the parents would always want to execute first on our system this particular system so there are some systems that the child might execute first but for this the parents might execute first and then the children start executing right okay so it's not like they are executing first like when they are coming out to the output right the parents output comes first right because they are executing together okay good so what we do next is we want to um, we'll say if child if we want to separate what both of them do because we only want the child's output right so if child is equal to zero right so this is what this is what we know because the return child underscore PID. So if the child P, uh, return type is zero, that is when we know that, okay, this guy is uh, for the child, right? And then, um, so else, this is the parent, right? Okay. Else, it means it is the parent, right? So if it, it minus one, it will have returned here. So that's how we just have zero and the positive part, right? X else, which will be um, zero. So the next thing we'll say is um, else, you should just, you should wait. 
so this guy should wait and wait to collect a an address of an int and pass a status right so this one is the parent right so this is the parent so let me just do like this the parent okay so this is the parent all right good so um this one is the child process so what is the child process supposed to do if you check very well we'll see that he says that he's supposed to execute this guy right so if you use the fork if you use the weights it's just execute that we want to use now okay so we'll execute it in the child because it's the child process that is supposed to do that right so all the five child process will do this okay so what we do is we will we'll declare a character at the top for the exec, exec function character and we we'll call it ag, args character pointer so if you check for exec uh, function right you would be able to know how to use this guy it's as simple as apc okay so we'll have this and then we'll have our coily braces we'll end it comma and remember it has to end with a null right it has to end with a null so we'll have that and then we'll have all our commands that we want to use which is ls dash l and tmp okay so these are the arguments we need so we'll call this one ls right comma and dash l have you right comma and then cmp comma so we have all this right okay and then we should end with a null okay i think this one is slash tmp right Okay, good. So we have the that. So we have this, and then we can call the exec function here. So we say exec, exec be, right? Okay, and then we say exec will collect three parameters. The first one is um, the part we want to. We want to um, we want to the file is so I think that one is user uh, user bin ls right in on our system right so let me just check to confirm so we'll just see which which ls user bin ls yes so it will be slash user slash bin slash user slash bin slash ls okay and then comma and then we'll have our arguments right so i can just write args here right comma and then uh, we'll have our this guy to be null okay so we can have that like that okay so the next thing is uh, if this thing didn't fails because after this guy if it fails okay we can just be defensive and just say it should print error 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 right and then it should exit at this point Okay, so prob normally uh, this guy would replace all that is here, right? If that this guy is not for child, for example, right? The parents, if the parent was coming in, the parent would not even get here, right? This exec v would have replaced whatever is down. So it is after this guy, right? That it will stop. Okay, 
So, uh, yes, basically that's it. So, if the parent is coming, the parent would will be coming and the child will be coming, right? The child wants to execute this, but the parent will first want to print this out, right? But we have a wait status for one child to finish first. So by the time um, the child is um, executing, right? The first child is executing, this guy is waiting, right? So by the time the first child is executing, all the other child two are executing together. Right, so at that point, it is just executing this command, right? And by the time it's finished, this guy will not get executed. Okay, so I think we are done like this. So let us see gccfwe.c output as fw. Okay, fwe. So we have this guy being done okay so we've done the particular task so we did ls so if we run the command normally right let's see what happens but remember it is five times so this guy will be executed five times right so we have the child process executing it five times so we have the um, total zero this and then we have our directory one two so so we just have this three right c is 22 c is 22 c is it's been executed five times is this more than five times let me see okay you know what let me just clear and then execute this guy so as you can see look at what we have right so if i do fwe as well we have similar stuff okay let me see where, where did we do okay so we have similar stuff right The only difference is that this one is not colored just like the normal one. But yeah, so basically that's it and we are good to go. Okay, so so that will be all and then in the next video I'm going to see you. So in the next video we're going to talk about this exercise which is super simple shell. So I think this one will be creating like a small simple shell to do some commands um, so i'll go through it i'll let you guys know i'm going to code along with you here so um any errors i get will debug together okay so you can learn from all the possible errors that is possible right so see you in the next video